Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about samurai women during the Edo period. Um, and of course, when we're talking about samurai, we are always uh, talking about women, certainly because uh, the samurai are a status group. Um, it's not that uh, you have to actively be a male engaged in fighting to be a samurai, far from it. Uh, it's a status that gets passed down from generation to generation, and there are just as many samurai women as there are or were uh, samurai men. But I think we uh, really should focus in on samurai women, of course, because in uh, very many important ways, their lives were significantly different from their, uh, their male uh, counterparts. Uh, and were deeply affected by decisions made on their behalf by men. So, in many ways, uh, what we're going to see today are echoes of things that we have studied, uh, that we have covered already. Um, the Edo period did not see a overall, um, nothing approaching uh, uh, feminism, nothing approaching uh, any kind of conscious uh, effort to uh, end patriarchal control over women, women's lives. Uh, in fact, in some ways, um, it was even intensified uh, with the kinds of differences and the kinds of continuities I think we should really understand. Um, and in order to do this, today I want to take a uh, broad look at uh, the place of women in medieval and early modern Japanese society, paying special attention to samurai women, um, and kind of cover a little bit of the same ground that we've covered before um, to uh, really set the stage for understanding how uh, samurai women's lives evolved during the Edo period. Very broadly speaking, Japan as a society uh, underwent an evolution during the medieval period um, where the, uh, the lives of uh, higher status women uh, really uh, became a lot more difficult and a lot more controlled by men, a lot more patriarchal. Uh, in fact, if we do remember uh, the, uh, the pre uh, not the previous, the, the, some of the first lectures in, in this course, uh, we will note that there were uh, uh, female rulers. Uh, we just saw one um, in the last lecture as well, Empress Meisho. Um, but uh, unlike Empress Meisho, the earlier empresses really were independent uh, political figures uh, in their own right. They actually had power in addition to being, uh, to being women who just happened to be sitting on the throne because it benefited some warrior clan. And uh, in, in some ways, Japan uh, did actually start out as a matrilineal society um, it, at the highest levels. Uh, now, this certainly was attenuated during the Heian period, uh, but still, in aristocratic culture, women had a great deal of power, a great deal of control over their lives. They could own property. Women could divorce men. Um, it was not a uh, environment, uh, the Japanese court uh, was not an environment where you had very you know, fierce males battling with each other over the sexual possession of women. In fact, violence was seen something as uh, that was base, uh, both for men and women. And the, um, as we've seen before, the patriarchal uh, shift in the position of Japanese women, high status women, uh, really came uh, out of the samurai class. And of course, as far as peasants were concerned, uh, certainly there was quite a, a great deal of um, patriarchy operating there as well. Um, but uh, since this is a you know, course about the samurai, um, the, uh, the samurai ideals of what women should be like became ever more influential as the samurai themselves moved into kind of the upper levels of Japanese society and stopped being just country bumpkins uh, who like to stab each other, uh, but a real ruling class and one that was increasingly taking on the trappings of culture as well. Um, 
And women, uh, by the start of the Edo period, and actually into the medieval period, uh, certainly samurai women, uh, did not legally exist as individuals. Uh, their property and their very identity was tied to the menfolk in their lives. Um, we will get a good uh, summary of at least what the um, public accepted reality of women's lives in a samurai family were supposed to be like uh, by looking at the so-called three obediences. Uh, this um, Confucian notion that uh, when she is young, that is a woman, uh, when she is young, she obeys her father. When she is married, she obeys her husband. And when she is widowed, she obeys her son. So the place of a woman in society and her actions on a very day-to-day -day level, um, minute to minute even, uh, is really dictated by the men in her lives. She obeys and uh, shouts up. This was something that, um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, this was the official public face of it, right? The omote, uh, of how women were supposed to be treated, how women were supposed to behave themselves. Uh, but, of course, this varied according to one's uh, economic. Usually, economics were, were the uh, strongest indicator of this. Uh, economic well-being for samurai women, and we've already talked about this, uh, the higher up you were, uh, the less freedom you had, and the more literally you were expected to uh, at least look like you're following these three obediences. And in many, case, real, uh, in many cases, real uh, disobedience was uh, swiftly punished in, punished in many samurai households. Um, you know, daimyo wives and daughters of daimyo, they did call themselves hime, uh, princess, they were referred to as princesses, um, kind of a, a real way of saying that the samurai have now arrived and, you know, uh, we are princesses, uh, we call our daughters princesses too, uh, and our wives, uh, but their freedom was, as we've seen, uh, much more heavily restricted than the freedom of uh, lower samurai women who were expected to go to the marketplace and you know actually interact with people from outside the house. Uh, more of that anon. And um, as moderns, certainly we are looking at this issue, and for many of us, this will appear as a uh, very cruel way to treat half of your population uh, because they are women and to many of us it'll be especially uh, unpleasant to learn about this because we certainly see that our society uh, while becoming less patriarchal overall uh, I would argue uh, today is still indeed very patriarchal and we see uh, echoes of all of the things that we'll be talking about in today's world as well. Um, but uh, and, and that's incredibly important. There is no history without us analyzing evidence from the past. And when we analyze evidence from the past, we always are who we are. We always take our own experiences into account, our own systems of values into account. And every historic piece of historical analysis is in some ways uh, telling us as much about uh, the people who write it uh, as it does about the subject that we're studying. Yeah, that's always part of it. Uh, but we also must understand that from the point of view of people at the time, uh, men and uh, from what we can tell, uh, many women as well, uh, this was a properly ordered society. And it had a logic to it. And the logic certainly didn't uh, function in many ways, like uh, the logic that our society functions in, and certainly many of us personally uh, do not behave in this way, um, but they really did, um, this society really did uh, hold up patriarchy as not only acceptable, uh, but um, uh, proper. Certainly there were people who disagreed, uh, but uh, there was, as I said earlier, nothing like a feminist movement in early modern Japan. 
um, people grumbled uh, but uh, and people wrote diaries but um, very often when you read diaries um, even of women uh, you do get very often uh, affirmations of the value of patriarchy um, and uh, that is uh, it's 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 almost impossible to say uh, what people really actually believed on an individual basis you know you look at a diary uh, there are many reasons why somebody could have written uh, a woman a highly placed woman uh, could have written that you know women today are losing all respect for men how terrible is that maybe she expected her diary to be read maybe she actually believed these things that's really difficult to say but what is very important to keep in mind is that there was this uh, overwhelming cultural pressure uh, and a cultural narrative just you know this is how things are done uh, that expressed itself in this way both among men and women um, it just as much as it is a job of the historian to analyze events from our point of view um, because in being very conscious of the fact that we are people with our own biases and opinions um, we must also try to understand these people on their terms as much as possible okay so uh, <laughs> backing out of that and um, getting back to the uh, the narrative uh, at hand um, as I briefly mentioned earlier, and as we'll discuss more later, um, just keep this in mind that during the Edo period, basically patriarchy hardened in many ways. Now, I do want to examine in more detail various influences on this increasing marginalization of women. And certainly we've talked about some of these. Um, uh, for example, the uh, the samurai uh, identity of themselves as warriors and uh, fighting was, I mean, it was seen as a male's job, and there were some incredible or not incredible, but uh, exceptional cases of women fighting, and there was the expectation that women would fight and die in defense of their homes, uh, but really, when samurai thought about warriors, they thought first and foremost about the men who, you know, went out uh, on campaign and manned castle walls and did all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was a major factor in the marginalization of samurai women uh, during this time period. You know, yeah, you're warriors, but, you know, you're just kind of second, uh, you're, you're not even the second line, you're the last line of defense. Uh, so, you know, uh, let the men who do the most fighting uh, take care of, you know, important stuff. Um, another reason that the uh, social structure of the samurai helped to promote patriarchy, as we've mentioned before, so we don't really need to go into this that much, uh, is that basically women were used as a way to cement alliances between houses. Samurai identity was in many ways centered on the house. Um, and um, individual identity certainly was important in individual exploits, but really what mattered is your clan. Uh, and in a very hierarchical kind of society, uh, if you are, you know, a younger brother or a younger sister, you do what your elders tell you to do, whether it's an older brother or the family patriarch. Uh, and if you are a woman and, you know, your father tells you to go marry some uh, important samurai, um, then um, you definitely do that. But, uh, and this is the uh, very interesting, uh, one of the very interesting parts about the Edo period, it's so well documented, that we often have evidence uh, to suggest that while uh, patriarchy was uh, important in that you had to publicly appear to do what your father told you to do, um, it seems that women had much more freedom uh, within uh, their personal lives to manage their personal lives and especially to uh, marry or not marry uh, than historians have previously thought. Um, you could really dig your heels in if you were a woman and um, your family uh, would in many cases give up. 
uh, and uh, allow you to not marry somebody who you really did not want to marry. Um, sometimes, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's a lot easier to get out of a marriage that you don't want than to really force a marriage through that you do want that your family is opposed to. Uh, so um, I'm not um, really uh, certain that uh, obstreperous uh, samurai women uh, very often dug their heels in and made their father agree to a marriage that they wanted, uh, that the woman wanted that the father did not, there's quite a lot of research left to be done in studying samurai family lives, um, but uh, you did have a, a certain degree of control over who you married as a woman, uh, as a samurai woman, uh, and uh, divorce among uh, samurai, uh, well, within the samurai class, uh, was actually uh, fairly common during the Edo period. It was no longer a case of the woman just, you know, refusing to let a man into her house uh, and they would be divorced as it was during the Heian period for aristocrats. But uh, you could get out of a bad marriage uh, and you could get out of a marriage where uh, the husband was just making you miserable. Uh, you often put, uh, m uh, put pressure on your uh, birth family to intervene with uh, your in-laws and maybe get the marriage dissolved. Um, but when all is said and done, women were still very much viewed as uh, bargaining chips, as uh, people who uh, basically, who did their duty by their family by marrying who they were told to marry. Men, samurai men also had uh, very limited control over who they married if they um, uh, if they were younger and if their clan elders or their family was telling them you will marry this woman older men had a certain degree of freedom um, but it was clear that women still were in the subordinate position in uh, entering into a marriage contract so that was um, the, uh, or there were two of the more important influences on samurai uh, women's status because of the fact that they're samurai. Uh, there are other influences that come from other areas of Japanese culture. Uh, Buddhism, for example. Um, it may surprise uh, some of you to know this, uh, but uh, Buddhism, especially, uh, or, you know, Buddhism before the modern period, um, was a religion that was very, very much uh, conscious of the issue of uh, a woman's place uh, in uh, the cycle of death and rebirth, and uh, that place wasn't good. Uh, the original Buddha even wanted to prevent women from becoming nuns, arguing that women were so full of sin that they could not possibly achieve enlightenment, it was just impossible for them, and uh, they first had to be reincarnated as male uh, to kind of wash some of the bad karma off, uh, you know, work it off uh, during your life as a woman, and come back in the pure form of man and have any hope of excuse me, uh, have any hope of reaching enlightenment. And um, it, the Buddha was eventually um, kind of you know, threw his hands up and said, okay, fine, we'll have nuns. Uh, and there were certainly uh, monastic orders for women uh, in Japanese history for as long as Buddhism has been in Japan. But there was still this notion in Buddhism that women were somehow less perfect. Uh, also, uh, and we've talked about this a little bit more, Confucian notions of vertical relationships, that everybody had somebody above them, uh, and everybody also had ev somebody below them, uh, but that if you were a woman, you, you know, for example, had to be mindful of the three obediences, uh, and you were never really officially the head of any family or anything like that. Although in private, many women did, uh, and many samurai women, we'll talk about this a little more, uh, in private, many of them did 
exercise a fair amount of control over household matters. And also, the Chinese uh, imported characters that are used to write the Japanese language, even there you find traces of patriarchy, and they're there um, until today. So, brief Japanese lesson, and by the way, this actually blew my mind when I was uh, uh, learning Japanese. It was very interesting to see how language reflected cultural uh, baggage or values or whatever word you want to use. The word for husband is shujin, and shu is uh, a character that represents the idea of being the main, uh, and uh, jin is person, and these are Chinese sinicized readings of these characters um, as they have now entered the Japanese language, right? So a um, husband, the main person, shujin. What about the wife? Well, the wife is uh, represented by the character house and interior. So, what is a woman? A woman is kanai, somebody who is inside the house. Uh, and there are other ways of saying wife, which are just slightly less patriarchal than this. Um, but this kind of gives you the idea that even in the words themselves, you see these mechanisms of social control. Uh, and Japanese feminists today have made an issue of the very, of the very shape of the language used. Uh, and this is a conversation that people are increasingly having in Japan today. It's a very interesting conversation indeed.